Thank you Organic Basics for sponsoring today's video. In this video, I'll share 11 tips for a minimal and organized closet. A cluttered and disorganized closet can really be a daily source of frustration. On the other hand, having a clean and organized one can make getting dressed and ready in the morning a breeze. This built-in closet in my new apartment is situated between my living room and the kitchen. It's small but tall, and I thought I'd share 11 ideas that I hope will inspire you if your goal is a minimal and organized closet too. The first step towards a minimal and organized closet is to declutter. Decluttering will help you to create space in your closet for the clothes you actually wear. You can go about this in several ways, but I like to go through each item of clothing and ask myself, one, if I wear it regularly, and two, if it still fits me. Don't just assume things still fit if you haven't worn them in a while. Try them on. If the item still fits, do you feel good when you wear it? If not, you really shouldn't hold on, even if you did pay good money for it. Let someone who needs it more than you have it by donating the item to a charity or giving it to a friend. That way you can feel good about passing it on instead of feeling guilty about the money you spent. Example. In late fall, I bought these pants at Uniqlo. We have really cold winters here in Stockholm and I thought I'd prepare by buying a nicer pair of warm pants. These are comfortable and fleece-lined and so cozy inside. How often did I wear them last winter? Once. I considered wearing them several times but ended up reaching for something else every time despite minus 15 degrees centigrade temperatures. Needless to say, I wasted my money. I can't return them, but I can donate them to the local charity that can either give them to someone who needs them way more than I do next winter or sell them on. Aside from the pants, I didn't have much to declutter this time, just this one t-shirt that I don't enjoy the fit of. I used to wear it to garden at my mom's house. When it comes to clothes, less is often more. It's said that we wear 20% of our clothes 80% of the time. Why keep all of the 80 that rarely or never gets worn? Try to keep your wardrobe minimal by focusing on high-quality, versatile pieces that can be worn in different ways and easily combined. This will make it easier for you to get dressed in the morning and it will also help you save money in the long run. How much minimal means to you and how many pieces of each garment you need depends on what your lifestyle and situation is. For me, it means that I need enough socks, underwear and t-shirts that will last me a week until next laundry day. It also means that I need quite a few sweaters with different necklines for the varying temperatures we have with our four seasons. The very cold winters and of late hot summers also means that I have seasonal athletic wear and so on. When you have fewer, better quality clothes in your closet, you're less likely to make impulse purchases. You have a better understanding of what you already own and what you actually need. When you invest in fewer high quality items, they will last you longer and you won't need to replace them as often and your closet will become more sustainable. And speaking of sustainability, I want to thank Organic Basics for sponsoring this video. If you followed along here on my channel, you know how much I appreciate this brand. Organic Basics is a carbon-neutral, Copenhagen-based brand creating underwear, activewear and everyday essentials. Their clothing is ethically made in Europe with organic, recycled and eco-friendly materials. Sustainability is at the core of what they do and they're also a member of 1% for the planet. This time of year, as temperatures are rising, I love their Tencel collection. I wore a set of Tencel shorts and tees so much last year when we had one of the hottest summers yet here in Sweden. Tencel is an eco-friendly fabric made from wood pulp. It's more environmentally responsible than cotton because it takes 80% less water to grow. Also, the fabric is softer, lighter and less prone to wrinkling than cotton. I got the shorts again, this time in black, and I love the relaxed look and feel of the light, relaxed pants and long sleeve tee. Such great additions to my closet that I will get so much wear out of. I have a discount code for 10% off everything at Organic Basics if you need some summer staples in your wardrobe. You'll find the links and discount code in the description box below. Take inventory of the space you have for your clothes. How much hanging space is there? How many shelves or drawers do you have? If you have a modular system where things can be moved around, 
Are you using it to its full potential? Or will moving a rod or a shelf, or perhaps adding a few parts maximize the space? I prefer to hang most of my clothes because it's easier for me to grab an outfit that way. That means I even hang my woolly sweaters in winter. Now that summer is approaching though, I fold away the thickest ones that I just aired out the other day. Until it gets really warm, I do still keep a few hanging that I layer when needed. They will get aired out and folded later on. Aside from the main infrastructure in your closet, consider adding things like fabric hanging organizers, shoe racks or more shelves to maximize the space in there and help to keep your clothes organized and tidy. Shelves can be used to store folded clothes, bags and hats. Hanging organizers can be used for shoes, scarves and belts or even folded sweaters and pants if you're low on shelving. Shoe racks can be used to keep your shoes tidy by getting another row in and make all your pairs more easily accessible. If you have drawers in your closet, drawer dividers are a great way to keep clothes like socks and underwear organized and easy to find. They will save you time when getting dressed and make your closet look neater. I don't have drawers or those neat wooden dividers, but I love these fabric bins from IKEA and use them for the same purpose throughout my closet. I use the file folding technique to store a lot of what's in them, so when I take a bin out I can easily see what I have. I don't file fold underwear and socks though, I feel that's a waste of time. Underwear I stack because it's pretty much all the same anyway. Socks I just toss in their bins. I do also keep things in my closet like a bin with my steamer, clothes, brush, fabric shaver, etc. There's also a bin with healthcare things like a foam roller, electric back massager, hot water bottle, etc. To make the most out of the deep shelves, I've tetris in narrow bins at the back. In them I keep seasonal items like swimwear in winter or winter walking gear in summer. It has been a bit tricky to remember what's in a few of them, so I'm now labeling some of the bins. Maximize the vertical space. You can create more and better usable space in your closet by utilizing the vertical space. This is what my closet looked like when I moved in. There was no hanging space at all in here, aside from two brass hooks. I knew I needed a rod, so I removed the bottom shelves and moved them further up the wall. That created the hanging space I needed. It also meant that I was able to maximize the rest of the space when the shelves were not so far apart. To maximize the vertical space you can also install hooks for bags, hats or jewelry. I have a hook for the clothes that I worn but can wear again on this wall. Underneath there's a hook for my tote bag so it doesn't get dusty on the floor. It also prevents the tote from falling over and spilling the contents onto the floor. You can also install hooks or hangers on the back of your closet door to hang your accessories like hats, belts and scarves to keep them organized and easily accessible. Also use the space at the top of your closet for items that are used less frequently. I keep three boxes on my top shelf. One houses summer shoes like flip-flops when it's not that season. One holds cushion covers and a blanket that I switch out seasonally. The third one is my sewing kit. I could technically add more shelves up top, but I realized that I could store my bamboo drying rack next to the boxes and that worked so well. Also, I don't really need more shelves.
My sewing machine is on the floor in the closet and next to it Bonus has his little hideout. He used to hang out there more just after I moved in and I don't have the heart to remove it to store shoes down there, which would probably have made more sense. For easier access to the upper shelves, I keep a stepladder on hooks on this wall. When I added a small cabinet in my bathroom, I was left with this mirror with a narrow shelf and that has come in really handy in here. It's a spot where I can put my phone while I pick out my outfit of the day. Using good quality hangers will not only help keep your clothes keep their shape, but if they're all unified, they will also make your closet look way more organized. With all hangers the same, your closet will also look more visually appealing. That can help you feel more relaxed when you're getting dressed in the morning because it will make your closet a nicer space to spend time in. If you're tight on space, slim velvet hangers are an option, but I personally prefer wooden ones. Organize your clothes by category, like shirts, pants, dresses and so on. This will make it much easier for you to find what you're looking for. It will also make you see what you have and what you might need to add or not to add. Organizing by color within those categories will also help you see what you have in each of the categories. This can help you make more informed shopping decisions. It will help you avoid buying clothes that don't work well with the rest of your wardrobe. It will also help avoid buying duplicates or multiples of items you already have enough of. As you can see, my personal wardrobe is very monochrome. At this point in my life, I know what I wear, what I feel good in, and what works for me. Some call it boring, but I like it. So adding colorful pieces to my personal wardrobe would be a waste of money, because I know they won't get worn. But you do you. Storing out-of-season clothes in storage boxes or vacuum-sealed bags will free up space in your day-to-day -day closet. These can either go at the top of your closet or in a different area of your home altogether. It will help you to focus on the clothes you actually wear this current season and make it easier for you to find what you need. I keep 95% of my clothes in the closet in my apartment but I do keep this rack in my storage space in the basement of my apartment building. It holds my bulkiest winter gear and a few fancier pieces that I almost never wear. But if and when I do get invited to the Nobel Prize dinner, I know where I have my outfit of the day. As for shoes, this time of year I keep my one pair of winter boots in the basement. The other shoes I have, aside from flip-flops and sandals, I keep in the shoe cabinet in my entryway. I'll make room in there for the summer shoes when barefoot season comes. If you store items in boxes or tops, make sure to label them so that you can quickly find what you need when you need it. Don't assume you'll remember, because you most likely won't. Diving into multiple boxes to retrieve your winter boots when that first snowstorm hits, only to find outgrown kids' clothes and holiday decor, is no fun. Labeling will save you so much time and make it easier to maintain an organized closet. A clothing rack isn't necessary, but having one on hand is quite useful. We got this one for my son when he had storage issues in his first apartment, and I took it over after he moved. I don't keep it in my apartment, but in my storage space in the basement. On it, I keep fabric organizers that keep what's in them dust-free. It also comes in handy when I have my closet declutters because I have somewhere to hang things while I sort. If you do it in an uncluttered way, a storage rack can also be a nice way to display your favorite pieces of clothing or to make it easier to plan your outfits for the week. If you have the space for it and are able to have some breathing room around it, that is. 
after I moved into this place it was invaluable because I didn't have a single inch of hanging space in the entire apartment. So while I worked on the closet, at least I didn't have to keep everything on the floor. And those are 11 tips that I hope will be useful to you if your goal is a minimal and organized closet. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, I really appreciate the support. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel if you don't already. I'm excited to share more from my new apartment here in Stockholm in future videos. If you're looking for sources, there's a link in the description box that takes you to my website where I'm collecting them for you. If you'd like to receive my personal monthly newsletter, you can add your email address to the list there as well. And don't forget to use my code in the description box for 10% off at Organic Basics. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Hey, do.